Hey guys, here are seven critical things that I wish I knew about growth in business and in life when I just started. Let's get to it. Number one is use leverage. Most of the entrepreneurs I know, they're trapped inside of their business. They're literally doing everything. They don't own a business. They own a job inside a business. They do everything. They do the marketing, the sales, the development, the support, the, the HR, the finance, they do everything, literally all the businesses around them. And the problem for that is they're afraid to let go or they think that their lack of the resources, they think that they don't have the capital to go and hire more people and do deals. And the answer for that, that I wish I knew when I started is you got to use OPM, other people money, other people time. You just got to use leverage. Like I said, go out there, raise capital, do deals with other businesses, buy them, and we'll get to that in the next one. But use leverage. That's the best thing you can do for yourself, which leads us to number two, which is don't wait to be Facebook before you do deals. Most businesses, or tech businesses or pretty much any business out there all they know is growing organically growing by doing more marketing more sales growing one client at a time and that's why they stuck at growing at most like 10 20 30 percent a year the way to get out of it is to start to do deals how do you do that go and write down what kind of assets do you have in your business and by assets i'm talking about everything if it's distribution your marketing processes your talent your um, softwares like everything you have inside of business think about what kind of assets do you have that someone else wish they had and at the same time think about what you can improve and think about who have those assets that i wish that i had who have the talent who have the customers who have the employees that i wish that i had who have the technology that i wish that i had all those different things Write them down, what assets you have, what assets you wish you had. After you do that, you want to do a deal with those guys. You either go and buy them, you can buy your competitors, buy complementary business to yours, or you do some kind of a strategic deal with them. When you do that, you basically immediately get access to all of their assets. You grow by hundreds of clients at a time. You grow by hundreds of employees at a time if needed and you access more products, more great employees, more processes, like all of the assets that you so far grew organically or try to in innovate organically, you now have access with someone who worked many years to build those things and you can access those immediately by either buying them or by doing some other type of a deal with them. That's what the big guys are doing. That's why Facebook is buying companies like WhatsApp and Instagram. That's why you see Apple doing deals with companies like Nike or Starbucks doing deals with Opera, right? Those are the deals to grow fast and the big companies, they gotta grow fast. You wanna learn how to grow fast? Learn from the big guys. That's the only way they can meet the shareholder demand. To go out there, buy companies, do deals, and to do all those deals, you don't need to be big. You can start at whatever stage you're at. Number three that I wish that I knew is always have the exit in mind. I had one of my mentors who told me the only time you make real money is when you sell a business or when you do some kind of an exit. You can say that IPO is some kind of a partial exit, but only make really, really good money when you sell a business. You want to run your business as if you're going to run it forever, but then your operations should be clean and organized as if you're going to exit tomorrow. You want clean processes, clean structures, you want clean financials, you want to make sure nothing is dependent on one person. All those different things are crucial to be prepared for an exit. And whenever you're prepared for an exit, it means that you're basically operating better already, even if you never want to exit. And whenever you're that prepared, remember there are big companies out there who are looking to buy amazing companies and they want access to more products, more people, better talent, better uh, systems, better employees, distribution, all those different reasons that they have to buy companies and you can have the same reasons. That's why you want to be prepared and who knows, maybe you'll get an amazing offer from those people, from those big companies or investors. And when you do that, you want to make sure that you're prepared because those guys, they don't want to buy a hobby. They want to buy a sustainable business that can run with you or without you, that isn't dependent on just one person. Now let's move to number four, which is more in the personal, uh, I guess, space, which is stop consuming for more than like one or two people at a specific space where you want to grow in. So for example, if you want to be healthier, don't learn from all those hundreds or thousands of people out there, read their books, sign up to their seminars, learn from them and get different mentorship. You want to pick one or two people and immerse yourself with everything you can from those people. Otherwise, if you learn from too many people, it's like opening up hundreds or thousands of puzzle boxes and trying to 
feel and create like one puzzle out of all, all of the different ones. You're gonna be overwhelmed, you, you're not gonna be focused, and when you're overwhelmed and you have too many ideas in mind, you're never focused and taking action. And that's what's most important in order to achieve results. You gotta be focused, you gotta have the accountability and support, and you gotta move forward on just one path and not be listening to too many reasons and advices and, and ideas. Number five is be obsessive about accountability and productivity because, and, and it's, here's the thing, right? You wanna set targets, you don't wanna set goals, you wanna set 90 days target, 30 days, weekly, daily targets. I was in the military for three years and in the military we set targets, targets we must achieve. We don't, goals are just a wish basically. Goals are just ah, something I wish, I wish I want. Targets, that's an urgency, that's a must for you. That's the difference. You wanna set targets and you wanna have accountability for those targets. So it's either by going out there, finding a mentor or finding an accountability partner and making sure that you take the right actions towards those, those targets. And that's the best way to get there with a mentor, with an accountability partner. And when you know what actions you need to take, you want to have some kind of a punishment and a reward system where if you're not taking those actions like i used to burn like 100 dollars notes in the past for every task i didn't make so you want to have something like that to punish yourself and trust me when you burn like too many of those notes on a day-to-day -day basis for every task you didn't complete um, you're going to start to complete tasks at the same time you want to have some kind of rewards as well for completing them obviously don't be too too crazy but have some kind of rewards to uh, convince your brain that you want to get those targets again and again and again and you're becoming addicted to get those results and never rest on your lowers every week you want to try to improve in your target so if you made x amount of sales in your business this week you want to grow it next week and if you're not growing that number your targets like, like literally you, you shouldn't be able to look yourself in the mirror because you're not growing if you're stagnating in life and business, there is no stagnation. You either grow or, you're, or you basically slide down. That's, that's, that's business, that's life. Number six is learn to enjoy failure. If you're not failing enough, you're basically not progressing enough. And if you're not failing, it means that you're basically stuck in your comfort zone. Now, you shouldn't look failure in a bad way. That's the problem. That, that's why people are afraid to get out of their comfort zone is because they're afraid to fail. But you need to enjoy failure. Like literally, you, you need to fail yourself to success fail your way to success like you need to see failures every failure is like a brick toward your castle you want to be satisfied and grateful but never content always more 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 to really fulfill the potential that you can be that i know you can be and number seven is never neglect the big four in life so you have health wealth love and happiness you want to have some kind of an activity on a daily or a weekly basis to make sure you're progressing in those as well so for me on a weekly basis i look at each of the major areas in my life and i ask myself how was it last week from one to ten so let's say it was a seven in like my health and i'm asking myself what can i do so it will be 10 next week and i'm putting it on the calendar i'm like if i think hey okay to, to make it a 10 next week I need to work out every day. I need to count my calories. I need to do, I need to work out with my personal trainer, etc., etc. I put those things on my calendar as my targets and I keep myself accountable with my partners, with my mentors. And that's the best way for you to do that in all the areas that you want to do it in all the areas, right? Not just in, in business or in finance. You want to do it in everything. Health, wealth, love, happiness. Obviously, you can dive into a few subsections there as well. So guys, follow those principles. You can do that. I'm not better than you. I'm, I'm nothing. My English is not even the first language. And I was like, those principles changed my life. I know you can do that as well. You are enough, guys. You're good as you are, but never be content. Go out there, become the best version you can be because you deserve it. And, and that's why you're here for in this life. You're not here to waste your time and rest on your lawyers. And I believe in you. So go and do that. Those principles changed my life and I hope they'll change yours.